Hi guys and welcome back to Mama 2 to Howries. Today we are going to go over what does Elaine really think about Amica? Do you know what Amica is? So we all know the word Amica after the depth we heard, but why was it on Elaine's mind? We're going to go through some things in motions filed in the Virginia case that I think might explain why Elaine misspoke about this word so often. I thought she just pulled the word out of thin air and was like, what is going on? What is she talking about? As so many of us probably were thinking, but it wasn't just a random word in this case. So let me know what you think. But one thing I know is that Amica cream and Arnica cream are not synonymous. Okay, so here we have Ben Chu is the one that actually brings in Amica. And Vinchu, who is one of JD's attorneys, introduces the word. And to and to be in the beginning of it put into Elaine's brain in his opposition to AH's team supplemental plea in bar on 6-28-21. So here's what Ben says. Here in the UK judgment does not operate as a race judicata or collateral estoppel with respect to Mr. Depp's defamation claims against Ms. Hurd. Because the requisite mutuality and privity among the parties to this action and the UK action is missing. The UK judgment accordingly should not be afforded preclusive effect in this action under the principles of comedy. Comedy generally applies where both parties were involved in the foreign disputes. Indeed, many of the authorities Ms. Heard relies upon in support of her request that this court grant comedy to the UK judgment are distinguishable from the circumstances here precisely because the parties to the domestic and foreign actions in those cases were the same in privity. And this is where you can see that um, Ben mentions the Amica case. So Ben is actually the one who introduced it. Moving along. Then we have in the transcript for a motion state, Elaine arguing about how she does not agree with Ben Chu's Amica case citing for Depp v. Heard on 722-21. So Elaine argues here, now Depp also cites Amica Life Insurance versus Barber at opposition page six through page 19. The court there reused, refused to bind a non-party to a prior judgment. Here, Depp should not be bound because he was the party. Furthermore, the court did not view that as comedy case and instead of a collateral estoppel case, and it was not clear from the decision whether the court thought that the actual issue had been litigated. Notably though, the four factors for this preclusion of factual finding for foreign litigation articulated in the Amica are met in this case. Identical issues, the abuse of Amber Heard by Johnny Depp, actual litigation of the issues, the findings 
of the relevant fact was necessary to, to the foreign court's final decision. I already quoted earlier, Your Honor, Mr. Sherborne's concession that the issue before his lordship was whether they were true. So what I'm getting from that is I don't think Elaine likes Amica as much as we thought she might. Let's, let's go on. And I've labeled this one, Elaine doesn't think Amica is magical, which I know is a letdown to many because we all thought that Amica was something magical. It had to have been the way it was portrayed. But lastly, Elaine mentions the Amica does not apply in the depth we heard in her PowerPoint slide she made to go with the argument of the 722-21 that we just saw. But Elaine did also file this slideshow on 8-9-21, but notice of the filing and submission of it wasn't found. And so then they find it and they upload it to the defendant's exhibits on 623-22. So let's see what she has put in her slideshow presentation. If any of you have not seen this, I will uh, put the links for these documents in the description box below if you want to go check out the whole the whole of each of these documents. And here Elaine puts cases cited by Depp are inapplicable to this case. In Amica Life Insurance Co. v. Barber cited by Depp opposition page 19 the court refused to bind a non-party to a prior judgment here Depp should be bound because he was a party furthermore the court did not view this as a comedy case and instead a collateral estoppel case and it was not clear that the issue before the court had been actually litigated notably the four factors for preclusion of factual findings by foreign litigation articulated in Amica are met in this case. Number one, identical issues. Number two, actual litigation of the issues. Number three, the finding of the relevant fact was necessary to the foreign court's final decision. And number four, the foreign tribunal proceedings were fundamentally fair. Note, there is no mention of mutuality. So in this one, if we look at number one, yeah, at the sub, sub core of this case and the UK case, it does come down to things that happen between Amber and Johnny. Number, but it's still not identical issues because we know that Amber was not a party in the UK case, the son was. And on number two, actual litigation of the issues. Now this one I just flat think is wrong. I do not think this one meets at all because the litigation of the Washington Post article that Amber wrote was not 
litigated in the UK. So that one is automatically out. So what do you think? Did Elaine fumble on her words as we saw her do with so many other things and words she would get mixed up and misspeak? Let me know in the comment sections and I will be back with more videos soon. Bye.